Let me ask first about the agreement the, after the preliminary talks uh, to start a coalition that SPD voters are kicking around right now. Um, why do you think it was not necessarily the greatest deal? I think it wasn't necessarily the greatest deal because it doesn't include tax cuts. So the conservatives promised tax cuts and didn't deliver it. it I think it's not a great deal because it does increase spending, uh, although we are in the middle of a boom, so it would be better to be more prudent there, and then focus spending more on growth-related spending. Uh, there are weaknesses uh, in the agreement uh, on climate policy, and I, the, the agreement is very vague on European and Euro policies and Eurozone reform. So overall, uh, I think uh, it's not great. We, uh, we see here um, the need for tax cuts because of bracket creep. This is something that you have talked about. This is something yeah. that Angela Merkel's wise men uh, have talked about. Essentially, the middle class, uh, because of inflation, is getting hit with a higher and higher tax yeah. rate. Uh, why doesn't why doesn't this agreement address that? I mean, it's something that everyone has agreed is a problem. Yeah, there is, is a strong focus on more spending, and the Social Democrats don't seem to think this uh, as important as most other people. So um, they, they focused more on uh, increasing s social spending, subsidies, and that kind of thing. Uh, but it's not just income tax, it's also corporate tax. We have the U.S. tax reform, so strong cuts in tax rates. We uh, have the announced French tax reform. The U.K. is going down to 17 percent in corporate tax. And we need to do something, and there is nothing in the coalition coalition agreement, so I think that's to remain competitive. To remain competitive, yes. Guy? Good morning, it's Guy in London. Um, does it really matter? I, it, this, is, this is tinkering with an economy that is absolutely charging ahead at this point in time. If we just get a continuation of, of roughly the same thing in terms of government, I, the German economy is going to continue to power ahead. Isn't that the read of the situation right now? I think that's true in the short term. So if we look at the next year, the pros prospects are very good, but uh, it may not be true in the longer term. We are facing great challenges in uh, the automotive industry. How about electric cars? Uh, how about digitization? I think um, competitiveness is something that is more of a medium-term issue, uh, and that's why it's important to focus on that. Also, we have a lot of discontent in the middle class about low disposable incomes, uh, and um, that's another reason reason to uh, do some tax cuts. Everyone's still paying after all the solidarity charge. By the way, I read uh, earlier this morning on February 5th, the Berlin Wall will have been down longer than it was up. And yet uh, Germans are still paying this so-called solidarity charge um, for the, 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 the reunification Absolutely. of East and, and West Germany. Uh, have they gone any way towards reducing that? Uh, well, there have been some changes underway, but essentially the solidarity charge has become something like a normal tax. This is something that is incompatible with our constitution, but it has become uh, a normal tax for the general government, and that's why people think now it's really time to get rid of it. Um, when you think about Europe and you think about what the, what the new plan is going to mean for, or what the plan that the, the two parties are putting together will mean for Europe, there's not a lot of detail here about what exactly is going to happen. What kind of detail do we need to see? You're going to be talking about this a little bit later on. What does Germany need to deliver if it wants Europe to take a step forward? Germany, together with its partners, needs to deliver two things. One is more stability, more risk sharing, and the other thing is more fiscal discipline and more responsibility. These two things are often treated as a dichotomy, as contradicting, but it's not contradicting. We need to deliver both to make the Eurozone uh, a more resilient to shocks, but then also uh, endowed with better incentives for good policies. We need to combine these two things. The trouble in Germany is that there is a lot of complacency about that. The government uh, thinks it, it, it needs to do nothing because the economy is going all right, but that's wrong. The next crisis will come, and good time Times uh, are times for reform, not bad times. All right. Claims that's a, uh, a great message to end on, but I want to just quickly add one more question, and that is, do we move any closer to the banking union that everyone seems so assured is going to happen? Is there any sign that this next government could tackle that? 
It will only tackle it uh, if this is combined with uh, structural changes towards more market discipline. So banking union is very much about deposit insurance, and that's a form of risk sharing. So many people in Germany are afraid about that because we are lacking complementary policies, bring down non-performing loans, have better bail-in for private investors for banks. So we need to combine these things, and then it's a deal.